Hi. My name is David Wilder, and I'm a professor at the Florida Institute of Technology in Melbourne, Florida. And I'm here today to talk to you about the Performance Diagnostic Checklist, or the PDC. So I'm first going to share my screen. I have a short PowerPoint that I will show you as I talk. <clears throat> so before I talk about the PDC itself, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about performance analysis. Um, performance analysis is the assessment portion of the field of performance management, which itself is a subdiscipline of organizational behavior management. So we have OBM, uh, organizational behavior management, and then there, there are a number of subdisciplines within OBM, PM, performance management being one of them. And then the assessment portion of performance management is uh, sometimes called performance analysis. So performance analysis is sort of akin to functional assessment in clinical behavior analysis or clinical applications of behavior analysis. That is uh, the goal of performance analysis is to identify the, the environmental variables responsible for some um, problematic performance, some, some uh, oftentimes skill deficit, uh, deficient performance, or uh, concerning performance in some way. So uh, there are four methods of identifying, um, four general methods of identifying uh, this skill deficit or problematic performance in performance analysis. Those four methods are informant methods, descriptive methods, AB experimental methods, and ABC experimental methods. So informant methods consist of uh, checklists and questionnaires, oftentimes administered by a consultant or a manager uh, to the employee, him or herself, or um, maybe the supervisor of the employee. And uh, the, the questionnaire uh, or checklist consists of questions that get at some of the, the possible reasons or the variables that might be responsible for the performance, uh, uh, the, the concerning performance. Descriptive assessment uh, involves directly observing the problematic or concerning performance and taking data on events surrounding that uh, problematic or concerning performance, so the antecedents and the consequences. AB experimental methods involve manipulating antecedents to the concerning performance. And ABC experimental methods involve manipulating both antecedents and consequences uh, for the concerning performance. So by far the most common method of performance analysis is the informant method. And uh, the PDC, which again is the focus of this uh, short tutorial, uh, is the most common method of informant assessment. So uh, the PDC was uh, originally produced, the performance diagnostic checklist, which was originally produced by uh, Dr. John Austin in the year 2000. So it's a little over 20 years old now. And it was uh, designed to identify barriers to adequate employee performance. So it was you know, designed to identify, as I mentioned earlier, some of the, the uh, issues, concerns, reasons why uh, an employee might not be performing as well as they could or should be in a, in a job, or really why they might, might not be performing a specific task that's part of a job as well as they could or should. Um, it was updated. Uh, just a couple of years ago in 2021 by uh, Nicole Gravina and colleagues. Um, so that I, they changed, uh, slightly changed some of the questions and some of the scoring uh, for the tool. So it's uh, more modern now. Um, in terms of how to do it, it's a, a checklist, a questionnaire, and it's, and it's typically completed via an interview with the supervisor of the employee who's exhibiting the, the concerning performance. So uh, the behavior analyst or consultant or manager interviews the, the direct supervisor of the employee who's exhibiting the concerning performance using the, uh, the PDC. So you know that person asks questions from the PDC, records the supervisor's answers, uh, and goes from there. So the tool consists of four domains, um, antecedents and information, equipment and processes, knowledge and skills, and consequences. And there's roughly four to six questions in each of these domains. 
And it was based, uh, Austin describes in, in the original PDC um, uh, description, that uh, it was based on Gilbert, Tom Gilbert's behavior engineering model. And it includes a lot of the, the same questions or similar questions that uh, Gilbert's um, behavior engineering model included. So a number of studies have shown the utility of the PDC. Uh, uh, I've just got a few here, but there are many more you can uh, uh, search and find fairly easily a, a number of them. Most of them were published in the Journal of Organizational Behavior Management, but some were also published in other journals. So Pampino et al. Um, uh, evaluated uh, the PDC um, in, a, in a retail store. And Ike and Houghton Austin evaluated the PDC in a, in a large department store. Dahl et al. evaluated the, the tool in a, a ski shop, right? So in each of these studies, they, they initially used the tool to identify um, the reason, so to speak, why a, an employee wasn't, uh, was exhibiting the concerning performance. And then they intervened based on, on the reason. So they implemented some intervention uh, based on the reason uh, or reasons why, as indicated by the PDC, that the uh, concerning performance was, was occurring. So since the publication of the PDC and the use of the PDC, a number of uh, sort of derivatives of the PDC have been uh, created. Um, the first one that was created uh, is the Performance Diagnostic Checklist Human Services, or the PDC-HS. This was created by uh, Jim Carr and colleagues in 2013, and it was updated last year by Sebastian Jimenez. Um, the PDC-HS is very similar to the PDC, but it's designed to be used in certain settings, uh, and that is settings in which services are provided to others. So human service settings like clinics, schools, um, group homes, um, in some cases, healthcare facilities. So any setting in which a, a service is provided to, to someone else. Uh, another derivative is... Um, the PDC safety, and this was developed by Brandon martinez onstadt uh, and colleagues in, in 2017. The PDC safety focuses on identifying the reasons for unsafe performance. So um, again, similar to the PDC, the, the domains, the sections are uh, slightly different. Uh, the questions, uh, of course, are, um, in this case, uh, very different, not, not maybe not very different, but they, there are some differences between this one and, and the, the PDC safety and the PDC because the focus of the questions in the PDC safety is on the reasons why uh, unsafe performance um, might be occurring. But the general format and uh, is, is similar to the PDC. And then finally, another derivative is uh, or variant of the PDC is the, the PDC parent. That was developed by Ansley Hodges and colleagues uh, in 2020. And the purpose of that tool is to identify why parents and caregivers aren't implementing behavior support plans uh, as they were asked to do. So uh, a lot of behavior analysts work with uh, uh, children and their parents. And oftentimes when parent training is done, parents you know, don't follow through with uh, what's recommended in the, in the behavior support plan or what the parents have been trained to do. So the the PDC parent was designed to identify possible reasons for that, why the parents may not be doing uh, what they're supposed to do, and then interventions based on the results of the PDC parent are, are uh, recommended. So I have uh, for each of the derivatives, um, one or two studies here, just to, uh, to give you an example of um, what researchers have looked at when, when these were developed. And since then, most of these studies were uh, done since the development of these um, variants or derivatives of the PDC. So for the PDC-HS, Bowen Sellers used it to identify performance concerns related to, related to discrete trial uh, teaching uh, implementation or discrete trial training implementation in a special ed classroom. And then they, again, identified an intervention and implemented the intervention based on the results of the PDC-HS. Wilder and Smith uh, did something similar um, but their focus was performance concerns exhibited by employees in a thrift store, and these employees had intellectual disabilities. So they interviewed the supervisors of, of these employees to identify you know, what might be preventing the employees from performing their, their position in the thrift store, 
um, better or, or doing actually it was a specific task that they were doing in a thrift store. Um, some examples of the PDC safety, uh, Cruz et al. used it to examine uh, how to improve hygiene, hand washing and, and uh, other hygiene measures by staff in a clinic. Um, Hooghly East et al. used it to examine the variables contributing to a lack of protective equipment used uh, in a school. Um, so again, the purpose is to identify the, the you know, the variables, the reasons why uh, for, for unsafe performance and then develop an intervention based on that. So these are two examples of, of the use of that. And then, as I mentioned, the PDC parent um, was used uh, to determine the variables contributing to parents' lack of implementation of their children's behavior support plans. Uh, and Hodges et al. did that in two studies. So uh, before I go, I'll just mention some recent research on the PDC and its, and its, and its variants or derivatives. In case you're interested, you can uh, check out these recent studies. So um, in, in terms of uh, where the uh, sort of the research in, on, on this tool is moving, um, there's been uh, some studies on the validity and reliability of the PDC, uh, mainly the PDCHS, but there's been some interest in examining the validity and reliability of the other derivatives, the original PDC and other derivatives. So uh, that's important because uh, you know any, any checklist or um, questionnaire uh, type tool ideally would be um, evaluated for its validity and re reliability, it would have sound psychometric properties. And so that's the, that has been the goal of a couple of studies recently, on the, uh, particularly on the PDCHS. Another line um, of, of work has involved how we identify the intervention uh, based on the results of the PDC or one of its variants. So uh, one way of identifying the intervention is, is a stat to establish a cutoff score. So I mentioned there were four domains. So uh, for example, any domain that scores above 50%, uh, that, that, that domain would receive an intervention. That would be one way to identify an intervention. Another way might be to take just uh, to to use an intervention um, focused on just the domain with the highest score. Uh, so there's uh, again you know varying ways of doing that. There's, so there's some research recently that's focused on um, what's the best way. You know what when when an intervention is when interventions are employed based on these various ways, uh, how effective are they? And so that might tell us uh, if one way is is superior to another. And uh, also another line of research on these tools uh, has involved examining if the person, uh, examining who is conducting or completing um, the actual checklist. So I mentioned earlier that oftentimes the behavior analyst or consultants, consultant works with the, the supervisor or manager, asks questions, interviews the supervisor or manager um, using the PDC, and then comes up with an intervention based on the results of that. But it's possible that uh, may, you know maybe a supervisor or manager could use the tool by him or herself. So the consultant may not be necessary. Um, it's also possible that that perhaps a peer might uh, be able to provide information to a consultant that uh, such that the PDC uh, or PDCHS or another another variant could be used to um, uh, an intervention could be developed based on the results of that. Uh, from a, a peer interview. So I've listed here my references, and uh, this is just a, these are all the references I covered in this short tutorial, but um, there are many other studies on the PDC and its derivatives. Uh, as I mentioned, most of them are, have been published in JOBM or, or uh, oftentimes Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis or Behavior Analysis in Practice. Those, I'd, I'd say those would be the three journals that have um, publish the most of these uh, studies. So if you're interested, check these out. And thanks for listening.